ました。What is good? We're back. <laughs> What's this growling? All right. So we just got through doing some wide receivers. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. We're going to do some tight ends as well. I'm Casey. This is Jason. We are the FF Dynasty. It's a bipod, not a tripod, not a quad pod. Uh, but so we're wrapping up uh, with all of our uh, off-season dynasty stuff. We'll still be doing dynasty in season. We'll still have some more dynasty shows throughout August here. Uh, but we've gone through a lot of mocks, uh, a lot of real drafts, and you know you can call them sleepers, targets, trade targets, startup targets, whatever you want. They all kind of come up to be sort of the same here. Uh, so that's what we're going to kind of give you a, a more of a veteran of my guys, later guys, not my not, guys, not through the first six, seven rounds. We're going to, you know, eighth, ninth, tenth round guys. We're going to pick up there. We had a, a little bit of a list for you on the wide receivers who maybe had a little bit more value on them. Not so much here for the running backs. Uh, so uh, you can we're, we're going to start off with, you know, a guy a little bit further down the list and don't really have any guys to, to send out, uh, you know, little offers for put your toe in the water and, um, and we did do we did kind of list out the targets in the top running back tiers that we just did we told you which guys we were targeting in startups and which guys we're kind of avoiding um we're, we're gonna go a little bit later than that for this show that's why you got to make sure you subscribe so you check all these videos that we're putting out uh, if you're listening on the podcast make sure you go give us a five-star review on spotify itunes send me a screenshot that you did that i'm gonna enter you into a contest to win a free tea i'm gonna give one out like every couple weeks so uh find a platform you haven't given us a five star on or you know send me a five send me the one you already did that's fine too uh but just trying to get some reviews and give away some of these hot fresh teas go to revelrybrewico.com uh hit the shop up if you just want to grab one for yourself and don't leave it to chance or your friend and, and or then, your whoever you want to get two get two <laughs> yeah all right who's your who's your guy who's your first guy running back target um so for me uh the, on this list uh as we're gonna pick up a little later gonna be kareem hunt um now there's not too many circumstances where i'm not going through the draft and trying to get kareem hunt on the squad whether it's my second or third running back probably not gonna be my fourth because it's just hard to come away with four at that time but i do like uh, the versatility that Kareem Hunt can give you and the flexibility that Kareem Hunt can provide for your team. So I don't leave a ton of drafts without Kareem Hunt unless somebody really reaches up for him. Yeah, he's ADP 110 and sleeper Superflex Dynasty ADP. That's that's round nine, you know, RB 32. How can you pass pass up on that? I'd right. take him over several guys listed ahead of him. And, and we have, ADP. yeah, right, which is why I don't like to leave without him because I want him instead of those guys. And we talk about in other shows about – you know, obviously there's going to be some other wide receivers that you probably still want there, but you know, sometimes you gotta, you know, you gotta grab that, that, that last running back that you really have a lot of faith in. For me, that's, that's hunt. Uh, so as we go through the rest of these guys, not nearly quite as high up, um, in the rankings as, as Kareem hunt, but, uh, so we're going to go through and, and give you a couple more guys. And for me, uh, Penny Rashad, uh, is a, is a, is a hit for me. I like to try to get Penny on the squad. He's pretty cheap, cheap, finished up the season really strong. That's no secret to anybody, but uh, he's only got one year left on that deal. He might end up somewhere else. They did just draft uh, Kenny Three Sticks, which, you know, big fans of over here. Uh, but big I, target, I, too high for right. the show, but big target. But I like, I like what Penny could provide. There's some positivity, some buzz around Penny. Uh, he's still pretty cheap. He ADP can, 140 overall, that's RB42. You know, I'm not drafting him to rely on to be a starter, but I'm relying I'm getting him to build, start to build a little sta stable of depth here for my running backs, and he's uh, usually one of those guys on that list. He um, could definitely fill in for you, maybe catch some lightning, probably early and on. And he may be your RB two starting off if he's going to get the the bulk of the of the load and be healthy. Feels like Kenny's going to take over at some point because he's just such a fucking stud, and or he's going to have to because Penny can't stay healthy. So. Right. Uh, I think I think there's a window. I, like I'm, not, I didn't have Penny on my list. I understand it. Um, there's going to be a window where you probably can sell him, right? Like uh, kind of the 
No, that's not not for me. Um, no. I'm getting him just to start building depth here. I, I, I liked what I saw at the end of last season. They're going to run the ball. Maybe he ends up being the 1A and Kenny's the 1B. I think Kenny's going to be great. Maybe he takes it over, but it might be a year before Kenny's really the man. Um, and then Penny moves on. And if Penny could stay healthy, you know, could be just a nice depth piece for you. I'm not not looking not not really looking to flip too many of these guys that I'm necessarily picking up here. These are going to be my just trying to build up a depth of my running back room a little bit for for a little bit cheaper. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, if Penny blows up then and, and I could get something ridiculous for him, but probably not going to be enough for make make me want to trade what could be for Penny if I need him. Uh, probably, you I probably. I don't think there's life for enough. Penny after the Seahawks. Sure, why not? I mean, it's not, he's not dying. I mean, so he was dead. I mean, but he, he came back. Yeah, he came back crushed, and now he's still you know a nice value. So I'm putting him on on the squad uh, for me. Who 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 do you you don't like Penny? So who do you got? Let's go. Next guy in the ADP list anyway would be James Robinson, ADP 142, RB 43. No, no Chase Edmonds for you. I thought for sure that's where you were going here. No, I don't think I'm targeting Chase Edmonds. I think that's more of a necessity. Okay, well then that's a target though, no. It it I'm not going to tell you to go do it necessarily. <laughs> uh I I I find that sometimes I have to because yeah. I need a running back and I I'll don't take, hate it. But I mean, he's he's a little higher than all. He's 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 ADP's above Kareem Hunt, so yeah. um and our draft seed is not that much further away from, and the ones that we've been doing with the patrons, um, you he's know, he, ADP he, one twenty six in this in in in, in uh, sleepers ADP is RB thirty eight. So that's that's fairly cheap. He went eleven ten in this super flex startup that we got. I uh, got in front of me right now. That just one example, and then Penny was twelve four. So not too big of a gap between those two guys. So in that execute in that and that in this particular draft, uh, Chase could be on the list for me. It just kind of depends on where he goes. I'm not taking him above Kareem Hunt. Right. Um, Kareem Hunt's 110. Chase is 126. I haven't seen. I mean, usually, I guess I guess Hunt's usually going above Chase Edmonds. Yeah. Um, so, but, I mean, Chase could be great. We don't know exactly what's going to pan out there, but there are certain circumstances where Chase could be a target for me. Just Penny is always pretty much a target for me because he seems to be more consistently, you know, lower. Yeah. I guess with, there's, still, there's still really good players around – Chase Edmonds that I'm targeting in in startups if I can help it. Uh, but I I love the J Rob call that you said there. That obviously there's a positivity going around, so maybe that starts to creep up, and I'll start to get un, start unliking the the ADP if it creeps up. You know, three four rounds, it's not going to be nearly as fun. It was a ridiculous blurb, and I think we talked. Well, we talked about this on the Patreon show when we went. Did uh, we even talk about it? On we, there? we talked about it on the Patreon because I know I talked about the blurb being. That, oh, right. you know he's gonna take it was such a positive blur because he basically avoided the pup list and is declaring himself or they're declaring him like basically fully recovered from that torn achilles and, and he's back in like a nine month time frame which is pretty m miraculous and now there's a question about travis Etienne's workload and he's gonna be reduced to third downs and it's just like let's just settle down here on this blurb like he just because he's fully recovered from an acl surgery doesn't mean achilles sorry achilles doesn't mean that He's back to old J Rob, which he right. didn't have burst and agility to spare. He really kind of won on on his yeah. vision, his instincts, his contact balance, and just and a really good feel for the game. Like he is those, a really good, really good running back. Coming off those kind of injuries, if you're if you're haven't been going full throttle and haven't been in live bullets, and you know all of a sudden there's a little calf or groin or or right. hammy and, or something, and we saw Acres come back and he wasn't the same guy yet. Hopefully he'll be back to what we knew right. for, of Acres coming out of college. But there, there haven't like, been too many guys come back as quick as Acres did, and this is typically like an 11 month, 12 month deal to get back, and maybe not even quite be. You know, back to to full deal, confidence wise and and strength wise, and and you know, it's just pretty hard to simulate being in a game. So I could see it being you know five six games before Ro J Rob even would it, get. It could what, be this what whole year about. that he's still kind of like yeah coming back, but getting right. Still from love it, taking him, but definitely. if he moves up three four rounds, I'm probably going to be out on the sweepstakes. I just love where we're getting J Rob. That's like an auto pick for me. Yeah, I mean, this is actually pretty good ADP. Um, 142 overall is 
at the end of the 11th round. Yeah, and I've been getting him 13th, 12th, 14th, anywhere in there right. uh, for James Robinson. Right. Uh, so, but I've been that's that's been a big one for me. Um, but there is a ton of upside with taking that guy because watching the Jags th- through all these games, like he he is a really really solid running back, and they 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 kind of they, they probably need him, and and I think he's in a contract year because he's undrafted free agent, so he's not on like a four year rookie deal, and there could be life for J Rob after the Jags if sure, they really just turn it all over to Travis Etienne and. Maybe they don't want to pay him, and, and somebody else does, or whatever. Or maybe, maybe it's he fucking back awesome, and, and and Travis is getting enough in the in the receiving game. They both can coexist and be startable for you. I mean, yeah, doesn't make me worry about Travis's doesn't uh, not. workload. Et would be a target, a higher end target too, along with Kenny. So uh, obviously, if Melvin Gordon hangs around, and you need a veteran in that stable that you might be able to lean on, not quite in the Adam Thielen category, because I think Thielen probably provide a higher threshold of points potentially. For sure, but. Uh, Melvin could uh, potentially still have, you know, another nice trip around the sun, followed by maybe he didn't show any signs. He actually looked really good last year, Mm -hmm. Um, was actually arguably better than Javante at times. Um, In the running game, Javante got more receiving. Well, yeah, he got more. It doesn't mean he was better. Uh, But I'm not hating on Javante by any means. But Melvin, just I'm giving more Melvin his props. And if Melvin hangs around for for long enough, he's a target. When he goes a little early, I say, damn, there he goes. Uh, But you know, typically I'm I'm looking to add you know three or four more running backs, and Melvin Gordon could be that guy to give me a little bit of uh stability there for you know i might need him as a flex or or to to f- rotate into in a running back spot and still have some confidence and maybe maybe that's a complete waste of a pick but um, i'm on the melgo train i've been gus the gus bus always now you know now he's getting a little negativity about be, maybe not being ready so maybe that'll knock him down a little bit still taking still he's already pretty free 197 right. he was overall. always he was always super free so that was an auto pick for me now you know now they signed Corey clement and mike davis and maybe him and jk aren't quite ready but i'm still taking gus because i want a part of that running game and he's super cheap and he's had some really good stretches so mm. i'll take him and throw him on the roster because he's so damn cheap Gainwell, another one for me. Uh, just that's that's a little bit more of PPR upside with younger legs and love you know. getting Gainwell. Like gotta take Gainwell anytime, no matter what. Like Melvin Gordon was more of like a needing a running back depth piece. Like if you kind of punted a little early, that's like a good guy that could fill you in for a season. I feel like I might not be trying to get him if I feel already pretty good right, about right. my running back stable. But fucking Kenneth Gainwell. Yeah, I, I'm sad when I see him go off the board and I didn't take him, no matter what the circumstances are, as long as it's PPR. Obviously, we're talking PPR here, which is what you should be playing out there, kids. Uh, but God, get some gain well. Like, yeah. well, they didn't do anything over there. And Miles Sanders is telling you not to draft him. Like, they don't <laughs> – he can't stay healthy. Like, when he does, he's great. But, like, they need somebody right. else. They, they, they shifted toward being a predominantly run-heavy team and – He's so cheap, and there's there's a lot to like about him. And let me get him. I, I like I like what I saw, um, and that he he's a target ADP for sure. One seventy two overall, RB fifty three. Cordero Patterson. Um, I know he gets left for dead a lot, and he's older, and it's not that fun to pull the trigger. And and you know there's some love for Tyler Algier, but you know could be could be some nice PPR flexibility. He showed he was good. They used him well last year. He performed well in the system. He's got a got a leg up knowing kind of what's going on. Uh, so if CPAT hangs around, he gets disrespected in a lot of drafts because nobody has any faith in him and and why should you? Because he's shown you disappointment after disappointment and then one good season at 30 or 29 or whatever, but I'll still but you've take never, the swing. You've never been able to plug him into the running back right. spot before now or, or last year. Now it's just running back. But the thing is, he's probably still going to be playing some wide receiver. Right. So, like, Maybe. that is – I feel I, I'd rather take Cordero than Melvin Gordon, which he is a little higher in ADP. Uh, but that's the same kind of line of thinking. It's like probably not going to take CPAT and Melvin. Right. You get one or the other. Right. He's a 30 year old guy that can fill in for you. Probably a higher ceiling with Cordero because he can, he can score 40 yard touchdowns down the field, you know, and also get some work in the receiving game. That's a really, if he wasn't 30, like, man, it'd be like, yeah, if he, they just started doing this with him earlier in his career, but he, they really unlocked him there. In Atlanta he was, and every week he was questionable, but, you know, so it was just kind of his M.O. But he, and he I don't think it. he, he helped it. you in the championship, which yeah. is awesome because I was like, I really am going to be mad if Cordero Patterson wins <laughs> fucking people championships. But 
Um, so a huge one for me that I don't think I've missed in any drafts is Marlon Mack every single F in time. Let me get Marlon Mack on the squad for sure. Um, that's that's an auto pick for me. He hangs around for plenty, plenty long. ADP 184. Yeah. RB 57. Uh, let's see the draft I have pulled up right in front of me, round 14-10. So 15th, end of the 14th, 15th round. I love the shot on him. That's an undefined backfield. You get Damian uh, Pierce. Pierce earlier if you really wanted to, but you can wait and you can get Melgo, or, or not Melgo, uh, Marla Mack, and really have another Achilles guy. Uh, you could really, right. really have, uh, you know, have a, a nice little shot at, at something something exciting right there i know it's the texans so it's not that fun but it's it's an open right. open it's, it's very open no open David johnson there. no rex burkhead i think he's still probably there yeah. he was getting work like rex sure. burkhead's old ass was getting work right. that's how much they needed somebody else to come in mac attack baby let's go maybe he's washed but at 15 whatever let's go uh daryl williams another guy i try to get him in every draft i liked what i saw last year in kansas city um and then he comes over to arizona which there is kind of an opening Connor played really well last year, but they, they seem like they probably want to maybe use a little bit more than just Connor. Connor had a lot of touchdowns uh, to really help him out week after week and really put him in the, in the upper echelon of things. But I you like like 84 touchdowns. So I, many goddamn touchdowns. I like the idea of Daryl Williams a whole lot. They're talking um, about Keontae being on the bubble potential roster bubble. Obviously Pacheco is, is in the rookie category, uh, but Daryl Williams for me is a guy that I'd, I'd take a lot of, and I would take Pacheco late later as well. Um, you know, and then last but not least, a, a, a Sony Michelle question mark just because Mostert doesn't stay healthy. We don't exactly know how that backfield's going to go. I haven't seen Sony get drafted in any of these things that we're going to do. He, I don't know if he's even got an ADP over there, um, but you know. 228. 228. So super RB cheap. 69. Rams, right after Daryl Williams. The Rams kind of leaned on him, uh, you know, at times last year. I think that it, was, was it was kind of some of the best play we've seen from Sony. Um, so I, I'm, you know, at the end of a draft when you're looking around and you're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, Sony might be a guy that you stop on and say, hey, Mostert's 30. He keeps jumping out of his skin. Uh, we don't exactly know about Miles Gaskin. It seems like maybe he's they're pushing they they're pushing him down because they don't know about Should him. Should Miles be on this list? I mean, I mean he's, he's being he, left he for could, dead he and played pretty well last year. He could year. potentially, yeah. I mean, certainly. Um, and he's got to he's got to play some special teams. Edmonds has been banged up through his career a little bit, just nicks and and, and bumps and bruises, and and you know we really don't know. So Sony uh, kind of on there uh, for me, and then. Really, you know, any of these rookie running backs, if they're once they get cheap enough, you know, if you want to throw them in here, I know we're talking about vets, uh, but yeah, we, we, did, we didn't we didn't throw rookies in here. We've done a lot of rookie talk, but yeah, I mean, I mean, Spiller, oh, you, you before, pretty much before we Spiller every single day. Oh, draft. yeah, for sure. I'm not letting ADP Spiller get one, past me. ADP 120. Um, Keyshawn Vaughn was another guy. I know nobody's going to like that. I don't know what his ADP is. There's but, one guy out there that's really going to like that. Right. Um, <laughs> But Rashad White getting all the love when they, you know, they drafted Vaughn, I think a few spots higher than than Rashad White. And Vaughn had some couple of good spots. And then I feel like right when he was getting in the Tommy tree of trust, he did some things to let Tommy down. Uh, but I think, you know, maybe maybe he could be the guy instead of instead of Rashad White. And he is absolutely free. He's been in that system now for a little while. He knows what's going on. Maybe Rashad White does the bonehead things and gets Tommy mad at him and Vaughn's the security blanket. Hey, I know what exactly what I'm supposed to be here. Um, so he seems like he's pretty free. And I liked the couple of things that I saw from him last year um, and, you know, has the same draft capital as Rashad White and been there. And look, like I said, they drafted Keyshawn Vaughn. Uh, I think even a little earlier than where they, the area that they drafted Rashad White, and they didn't use him. So. They're both third rounders, right? So. so you know, it's not just to say they drafted. Well, they drafted him in the third. Well, they drafted him in the third round too, and they didn't use him. Um, and now he just kind of started, you know, kind of coming around. So. so Lenny, Lenny, Lenny's down back down to two forty five. Mm-hmm. So that's I think that's where he played last season. So I, that's all the non rookies. I want to I do want to touch on the rookies real quick because I think this it goes in line with what we've been talking about this whole show with these later round stabs. It's like and 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 it parlays right into that running back rankings video that we did of, of the top guys. I think we made it to like maybe twenty or twenty two guys. We plan to just do twelve, but we always give you more for your pleasure. It's hard to go RB robust in sure. these drafts this year the tide of 
these older veterans is changing. You got to force it's, it. There's risk with the older guys. In most cases. There's risk with most of the older guys. And the younger guys who are supposed to come in here and take over the helm have a bunch of question marks, injuries, and whatnot. So it's like there's like eight guys that I really want to get. And then after that, I'm waiting until a little bit later. And, and, and if you're playing super flex, it's like all these quarterbacks, you got to get a quarterback, probably playing tight end along with tight end premium along with super flex. So you throw in a, a Kyle Pitts or a Mark Andrews, like it's tough to get a good stable of running backs early in your drafts. And so you have to fill in with depth with all these guys that we've been talking about. That's why we have a, a big list of these later round guys that we're trying to get because we need to fill out that stable and build this depth because we don't have a bunch of studs. Like we usually, in years past, we've been an RB show. We've been like hammering running backs, but you just can't do that this year because of just the Couldn't way really things last year turned out. And, and, we, and we've been shifting a little bit, but like you still got to get some guys. And so the guys we listed are good examples, but then also these rookies, like it's, it's the rookies. I feel like I've been piling them onto my team. The Zamir Whites, the the Algier, uh, the TDP. If you have a Mitchell, the who else? Who else you got? Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I don't really miss Spiller. He's he's a big Spiller, one for me. For I sure. love getting Spiller. You got to reach a up a little higher, right? Um, but I try not to reach him in the super flex. You know, ninth, tenth round. I try to make sure I get him. Um, and then try not to miss him. You know, James Cook. Kind of hangs around sometimes, and he's kind of in the, the no man's land above all the guys that we talked about, and I'm okay with taking him at that point um, and, 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 and hoping for the best. And then, you know, really just any, like a lot, I didn't want to mention the rookies too much because it's like, it's really, I'll take a lot of them. I'll take Algier, and I'll take Rashad White, and I'll take Cook a little earlier, and I'll take Spiller, um, and just try to take shots on these objects that Zemir. we know that... Yeah, I mean, I haven't really drafted Zamir in any of these. He's cheaper than all those um, guys. Like he, he's cheaper than all those guys. I so like. you know, they're they're guys and Pierce. You know, they're guys that you can, uh, you know, get There's get hope, a little get a little value youth and goes some hope. Up. Whereas you know, a lot of these guys that we just talked about aren't really going to jump up. None of the too, Kenny too Gainwell probably um, the only one. And did we bring up Daryl Henderson? You didn't. No, I was waiting for you, but you didn't. I didn't. I didn't jump in there and say Daryl Henderson. That's an ADP one sixty five RB fifty. He's a guy that I've been stacking on my team when I need so because there'll be weeks where you definitely can use Daryl Henderson and then there'll be weeks when he's hurt the but, rookie running backs are cheaper in the draft uh in the startup drafts and obviously they're not really trade targets because people are really they just drafted them in a rookie draft so they're probably hanging on to them so they're going to be harder to get uh but you know startup, I, I, right. I like where the, where a lot of them are going and I don't have a problem with taking you know a whole you know all the ones that I just listed out there I like I like grabbing at and then super late Jerome Ford, I pretty much get Pierre Strong in every draft because I don't take any of the other uh, Patriot, Patriot running, backs. running backs. And Pierre Strong hangs around, and I like what I saw. Um, and then Tristan Ebner, Ebner, um, he's on the Bears. Uh, nice, nice receiving back, explosive, uh, fun, fun to watch. Just a, he's super late dart throw. And then we mentioned Pacheco on the Chiefs because he's Chiefs lamp. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, I think that I think that does it. That was a yep. nice list of guys. We brought a list. We each had five to ten guys. We gave it to you just like you like. This should be right up yeah, YouTube's these, alley here. These aren't in-depth breakdowns. They're just guys we've gone over and right. over again on on drafts. And yeah, I hit what well, I had end up with a reasonable amount of these guys on my team. And so we wanted to share that with you as we wind down uh, Dynasty off season a little bit. Yep. So appreciate you for joining us again. Go over to the. Pop, rate review subscribe podcast itunes spotify uh give us definitely get, let me get a subscription on the youtube channel send us some proof that you did that on the instagram facebook uh the ff dynasty at gmail.com anyway there's plenty of ways you can reach us send me a screenshot that you did it i'll enter you into a contest after a couple weeks do a random drawing give away a free t-shirt for your pleasure appreciate y'all for joining us we'll see you next time Peace. Oh, let us know in the comments who you like. <laughs> who okay. did we miss? Yeah. <laughs> who do you like? Who's your guy? <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs>